Hey guys, so today I'm going to be testing an i3-12100F. I'm going to be comparing it to the i9 from the past video. I already have scores for the i9 there. So I'm going to be pairing it with 3080, just like the i9. Everything's going to be the same other than the CPU. So first test I'm going to run is Cinebench. After that, we're going to run User Benchmark, then we're going to run Furmark, and then we're going to run Firestrike Extreme. And the last test will be the Tomb Raider benchmark. I want to see the difference between if you're using an i3 versus the i9-12900K. So let's do it. All right, so on paper, the i3 is four cores, eight threads, and the i9-12900K, you're looking at 16 cores, 24 threads. A lot more cores, a lot more threads. According to user benchmark, the price right now is 95 bucks for a 12100F, and the i9 is $550. So it's a $455 price difference. But it also just depends on what you're needing it for. If you're just needing an office computer, then why are you gonna go with an i9? The i9 is going to be for your, your video editors, even your photo editors. Someone who's going to be needing to do a lot of rendering, multitasking, just wanting the best performance you can possibly get. So the first thing is first, we're going to run the Cinebench test. I am using the NZXT Kraken X53, same one I was using in the i9, just so that it's a fair comparison. I don't see us having an issue with heat. Let's go ahead and run that Cinebench test. After running the Cinebench test with the i3-12100F, I scored 7,853. Now, if you compare that to the i9-12900K, it's it just blows it out of the water. The 12900K scored 26,558. That's like over three times better. As far as heat goes, the max temp the i3 hit was 56 degrees. The max temp the 12900K hit was 100 degrees Celsius. So if you need a heater, the i9 is the way to go. But still, you'll get way more performance out of the i9, which I've, I mean. Oh wait, then we said we were gonna compare it with the user benchmark, huh? User benchmark. So the virtual user benchmark test with the i3, I have it right here. This, this is what I should be getting. So for gaming, I got 190%, desktop 101%, workstation 168%. So those are the scores I should be getting. With the i9 gaming, I should be getting 231%. Desktop is 114%. Workstation is 281%. There is a big difference between the two. So let's see what I actually get. So I have the actual scores that I got with the i3. So for gaming, I got 199. Desktop 104. Workstation 178. So I did score better than what the virtual scores told me I should be getting, which is good. What the fudge? Did I not record it? Can't yeah, remember. The i9, for some reason I couldn't figure out why I couldn't run the user benchmark test. And I figured out it was the the Rivia, the MSI Afterburner monitor, the hardware monitor stuff, was actually preventing the GPU from being detected on user benchmark. So I didn't figure that out until after I switched out the i3. So I don't actually have the score of the i9. But the i3 did score better than what the virtual benchmark said. So that, that's good. So the i3 um, base power is 58 watts and the max turbo power is 89 watts. So you're gonna be using a lot less power with the i3. So if you're a tree hugger, i3 is the way to go, but don't expect your freaking, uh, don't expect your illegally downloaded version of Fruity Loops. Don't expect to do uh, any, anything crazy with it. And with the i9, you're looking at base power is 125 watts, max turbo power is 241 watts, which is a crazy difference in power. So, I mean, they're made for two different, I mean, they're made for different things. I think if you're buying an i3 and expecting to perform like an i9, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you, but just so you can see the differences, what we're, what the power differences we're dealing with, the price differences we're dealing with, and just to see what results we get between the two. So we're running Firestrike Extreme, 1440p. Let's go. These are just laying on the ground. So forgot to tell you, so the Furmark test, so both processors I ran for 10 minutes. The i3 max temp was 58 degrees Celsius. So that's really good actually. Did not struggle with thermal throttle at all. 
Yeah, and I did hit 100 degrees Celsius, so there was thermal throttle. But I mean, that's what you get. I mean, if you want max power, you're gonna get max temps too. So I just ran the Firestrike Extreme Test. Let's compare it. With the i9, I scored 19,828. And with the i3, I scored 17,646. Max temp for the i9 during the fire strike test was 71 degrees celsius and max temp for the i3 was 56 degrees celsius so both are in comfortable levels of heat now the test isn't very long that's probably why and it's testing your gpu a lot so i guess right there you could see that there was a bottleneck the i3 is bottlenecking the 3080 this is looking like the 3080 is a bit overkill for that processor i wonder hmm I wonder what the sweet spot is. Okay, so now that we finished that test, let's go on and let's do the Tomb Raider test. I started doing that test versus GTA because it's a, a it's a newer game, but uh, we'll compare. Let's compare the. This is what the i9 scored on the Tomb Raider benchmark. So total frames rendered, you're looking at 34,556 frames with an average of 220. FPS. If you're gaming in 1440p, 144 hertz, it would be perfect. If you're trying to do 240 hertz, you may not be getting the full potential of the 240 hertz monitor, but I mean, it's still it's still really good. Now, if you're comparing that to the i3, the i3, you actually got 19,365 frames rendered with an average FPS of 124 frames per second. At 1440p, 144 hertz, which is what this monitor is, you're not gonna get the full potential of the monitor. At times you might when there's spikes in FPS, but when there's a lot of action going on, you're gonna see your frames drop on with the i3, which means once again, i3 is bottlenecking the 3080, which is expected. I. I mean, the 3080 is overkill for the i3. I didn't get the max temp for for the i9, but the I did get it for the i3 and it was 52 degrees Celsius, which that's not bad at all. What's the verdict? That's just a comparison of the, the i9 12900K versus the i3 12100F. There is a big price difference, but I mean, you're buying it for different reasons. The i3 would be a good processor for office and home use. Maybe you can get into some gaming. Now I wouldn't pair it with a 3080 because you're not even getting the 3080 um, benefits. You should probably pair it with, hmm, maybe I should try to figure that out. Regardless, um, i3, you can game with it. It's, it's gameable, but pair it with, I would say like a 3060. I wonder, you'll probably, you'll get a lot less bottleneck, spend a lot less money and probably get very similar results because I would say F it, just get, pair it with like a 3060 Ti, which I might, I might just do that right now, just say F it. Well, there you have it. That's what, you know, the scores you'd get with an i9-12900K versus an i3-12100F. Are we surprised with the scores? No. It is good to know that an i3, why is it good to know? Hmm, okay. Well, we'll do some more tests. We'll, we'll try to figure out which, which GPU fits best with the i3. Oops. <laughs> Electron is some way Sorry. Um, da -da -da. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. Those are the scores. Those are the temps between the i3 12100F versus the i9 12900K. I don't know what else you guys want. There you have it. It was pretty sicko mode. All right. Till next time.